as mankind moves off of planet Earth. We're gonna have to bring salsa. So it's time for Hey King, 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 Outer, Outer, Bay, 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 A new growth. Welcome back to Orbit, everybody. My name is Boss. I'm a gardener and a lover of all things spicy. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that last year I did a series of videos about the Hangzhou space peppers. Now, these are 10 peppers that the Chinese space program and agricultural programs exposed to space radiation to try and cause mutations. And then they bred them for bigger outputs, bigger sized peppers, more vitamin C content, trying to make food on Earth better. So this year on They Came From Outer Space, we're really focusing on how do we grow food for our explorers heading out into space? Not how do we make food on Earth better? Some benefits there too, but what's it going to take to grow fresh produce, fresh vegetables for astronauts who are on long journeys or who are stationed on the International Space Station, for example? And so that's where we are looking at a very special space tomato, a pepper designed for the International Space Station. And I think we're actually gonna plant one more surprise pepper next time. So let's talk about what makes plants good for growing in space. There's not a lot of space on the space station, which is kind of funny, right? So we need to be able to grow in tight confines. We also need to be able to find plants that will mature quickly and maybe produce fruit early. Astronauts have been taking seeds for tomatoes into space. They've actually been doing this for decades. Um, all the way back to the 80s, I found information about seeds that were taken to space and exposed to space radiation. You can actually find some of those seeds still available for sale on eBay and places like that. In this case, there's a project called the Tomato Sphere, which is meant to help develop food for space as well as educate children in schools across the world. So what I have here is actually two little tomato plants that hopefully I can separate. Otherwise, they're going to grow together and we'll see what happens. These are grown from seeds of a tomato that was grown from seeds that were on the International Space Station. So the parent plant that produced these seeds came from space exposed seeds. Pretty cool. I have noticed a few things about this plant already. Very fast growing. And if you look closely enough, you can see that the plant is actually starting to get ready to flower. So we should have fruit on this thing pretty soon. So the Tomato Sphere program is actually meant to be kind of a blind study. So half the students got space exposed seed, half of them got non exposed seed. And they studied the growth habits. Originally, it was just supposed to be about germination rates, but now they're looking at nutrition and the full life cycle of a plant. It's a great way for kids to learn. And it's pretty cool to think that they may or may not be growing tomatoes that the seeds came from the space station. And so we'll be keeping an eye on these plants here throughout this series to see how quickly we get tomatoes, what other characteristics we might find that help them be effective space plants. Now the pepper that we're growing is a slightly different story. This did not come from space. This is called the Triton pepper. The Triton pepper was developed by Utah State University along with several other vegetable plants to be dwarf and compact, to grow quickly, to fruit early, and to not need a huge amount of light to grow well. These are all things that make them ideal candidates for growing on the International Space Station or on other space journeys or vehicles where you want to be able to produce fresh fruit, in this case peppers, very quickly. These tend to come to maturity in about 70 days, I'm told. So this particular plant is growing in passive hydroponics and it's been doing quite well. You can see it's got a nice root system being established. It's got several sets of leaves. And I only expect it to get maybe 10 to 15 inches tall. I'm excited to see how quickly this can fruit. I've been keeping it under rather weak lighting and it's doing just fine. And so the point of this program at Utah State is to continue to grow vegetables that will thrive in space. They even have grains like wheat. I'm going to try and get my hands on some of those other food varieties to grow for this series, but for now, we've just got the Triton. This Triton pepper was planted in early April. I think it was April 11th. Today is May 22nd. It's coming along quite nicely for a little over a month. The tomatoes were planted about a week before that, so April 3rd. 
and they are also quite mature at this point. I don't think these are gonna get bigger. They are a dwarf variety. And so we can see that one plant in soil and one plant in passive hydroponics, they're both doing pretty well. But I think for this series, we're also gonna try one other grow method, and we're gonna start one of these Triton peppers in the Arrow Garden. Arrow Garden tends to grow plants really fast, so I wanna see if that active hydroponic grows even faster than the passive, and if we can get to fruit, even though it's coming from behind, at relatively similar times. So let's get our plants started in the Arrow Garden. All right, so we've got the Arrow Garden here. The reservoir is full of water. I have not added nutrients yet. I have one sponge. So when I grow a pepper plant in the Arrow Garden, typically one is all it's going to support really well. I don't want to use all six holes. In this case, this is a Arrow Garden harvest, so it has six planting holes. Best to use just one, and best to use one that's right here under the center of the light as close as possible. So this has been soaking for a few minutes. The sponge is nice and wet. We have our Triton pepper seeds. You can see those, pretty cool, right? And I'm gonna keep this really simple. I'm gonna put three seeds in the Arrow Garden pod, and then we'll keep an eye on them over the next week or so to see if they germinate. There's quite a few seeds in this packet, but I've had pretty good luck. This one, I put three seeds in there, two germinated. I pulled out the one that wasn't thriving as much, and now we have this guy. So planting in an arrow garden is super easy if you've never done it before. There is a hole in the sponge. You simply drop your seeds in the hole. Three best looking ones. We don't want any that look like they were smashed up. I've got three seeds in the pod. Kind of tap it to make sure they're all making contact with the wet sponge and into the spot it goes. You'll take a little plastic humidity cover cover that up. And at this point, I'm ready to power it on and set it up for growing at about a 17 hours light cycle. I'll have 17 hours on, seven hours off. All right, so I've got the seeds planted in the Arrow Garden. I've got the Arrow Garden set to, in this case, it's the herbs setting, which happens to be their default for 17 hours on, seven hours off. I will keep an eye on this. Today's May 22nd, 2022. Let's see how quick it germinates, how fast it grows, and can it catch up to the passive hydroponics? So these are the kind of experiments that are important to know what's the best way to grow food for astronauts. Now, of course, growing in something like an aero garden in space becomes difficult when there's no gravity to pull that water down over the roots. So I want to do a little bit of research to share with y'all into how exactly they grow food in zero gravity. More coming on that in a future episode. So we're gonna wrap it up today with just a few final thoughts and what to expect for this season of They Came From Outer Space. We're gonna be a little bit more focused on what's it gonna to take to grow food off planet. And we'll talk a little bit every episode about what characteristics of a plant make it ideal for growing in space and why. And what are some of the efforts being done today and hopefully in the future by people who get inspired to grow food for outer space to continue pushing the boundaries of what is and isn't possible to grow food where there's no gravity, really tough conditions, and everything has to be provided in an environment that you create. Really cool stuff. It's the future of agriculture in a lot of ways because we're explorers. We will push off this planet in a meaningful way someday, and we've got to be ready to supply food and nutrition for everyone involved. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and hit the bell. You'll never miss another episode. I'm also growing the entire alphabet of peppers this year. So A to Z, a pepper for every letter and a whole bunch of other cool stuff coming for 2022. So please consider subscribing, share the videos with your friends and remember, plants help us grow. Peace. So y'all can watch this growing journey on my way to be a botanist. I got this garden game on my kid. You should spice it up and grow like bosses.